Welcome to Builder Knowledge. This video is on metal wall studs. Take your time to understand all of our videos and you will pass your builder advancement exam. Let's begin metal walls with the component identification code. With metal walls, you want to be sure that you have the right stuff. What is the right stuff? It is the studs, track sections, U channels, and furring channels. The right STUF. It was developed by the Steel Stud Manufacturers Association, SSMA. Component thickness is listed in mils, not to be confused with or interpreted as millimeters. Studs. Studs are also used as joist for floors and ceilings. They are C-shaped, have a web depth from 1 and 5 eighths inches to 12 inches. Dot flanges stiffen the web and provide surfaces. For attaching sheathing, lips extend from flanges on the open side and stiffen the flanges. Two equal-sized C-shaped studs are combined to form headers. Track sections. Track sections are comparable to top and bottom plates in wood frame construction. They consist of a web and two flanges. The web width must match web width of stud. U-channels. U-channels are used for bridging studs and attaching walls and ceilings for added strength. Furring channels. Furring channels are used when attaching drywall to masonry construction walls. Now let's cover some of the tools used on metal stud walls. A screw gun is used to drive self-tapping screws. A drywall screwdriver is used to fasten metal framing members to each other and to fasten sheathing panels to framing members. The pin gun is a pneumatic tool used to install drive pins. And a clincher is a pneumatic tool used for pressing one metal framing member into another. Abrasive cutoff saw. It is used to cut metal framing members. Power shears are used to cut metal components up to 68 mils thick. Aviation snips are used to cut metal components up to 43 mils thick. Clamps are used to hold metal framing members together while they are being fastened. Metal stud system fasteners are typically self-tapping screws. They fasten framing members to each other and other materials to framing members. They cut their own threads as they are driven into metal framing members. There are two types. Self-drilling screws and self-piercing screws. Self-drilling screws are the most frequently used steel-to-steel. -steel. Fastener. The screw points drill through the steel layers before the screw threads engage. The screw should be 3 eighths inch to half an inch longer than materials being fastened together. The self-piercing screws have a sharp point capable of penetrating and tapping thin metal. Their diameters are identified by gauge numbers from number 6 to number 14. Drive pins. Drive pins are used to fasten panel sheathing to metal framing for walls, floors, or roofs. They are driven by pneumatic nailers and are made of heat-treated, high-carbon steel. They have grooves or nulls on the shanks to draw the pins tight when driven. As a pin is driven, the point penetrates the sheathing and bores through the steel, pushing the steel outward from the pin. The steel then compresses and grips the pin. Remember to always refer to the manufacturer's specifications before driving drive pins. Spot clinching joins metal framing members and provides a strong connection without mechanical fasteners. A pneumatic clincher is used to press a section of one framing member to another, leaving a button or stitch indentation. A clinch made in the wrong place must be drilled or cut OU. Therefore, accurate layout is essential for clinching. Welding is used to prefabricate wall sections in shop rather than at the job site. It must be done by a certified welder in accordance with American Iron and Steel Institute AISI standards. Unlike gauge steel, welding will destroy the zinc coating 
applied during galvanization. A corrosion-resistant coating must be applied to the area in which the coating is destroyed. Metal stud applications. Reminder, always check the specifications for metal stud size and gauge. Exterior framed walls will use a heavier gauge stud than ones used for interior. Framing a metal stud wall. Wall studs can be pre-cut and delivered to the job site or cut at the job site. Walls are framed on the subfloor or on a separate panel table. Lay out the walls on the subfloor or panel table and snap lines. Cut the bottom and top tracks. Insert a 6-inch or longer piece of stud material and fasten it to the tracks where they butt. Together when splicing tracks is necessary. Lay out studs. Position the tracks on the edge next to each other. Lay out the studs, usually 24 inches OC, using a black felt tip marker. Mark the tracks using standard conventional methods. Lay out door and window openings using a red felt tip pen. Pre-assemble the door and window framing. Members and place them as a unit between the tracks. Fasten the studs. Position the studs between the flanges of the top and bottom tracks. Tap the track flanges against the studs to ensure the studs are tight against the track. As an option, secure the studs and tracks together with a locking C-clamp. Then fasten the studs to the track flanges with Number 8 self-drilling, low-profile screws. Turn the wall over. And secure the track flanges to the studs using the same procedure after fastening the studs and tracks together. Square the wall. Square the wall by measuring the wall diagonally from corner to corner. And adjust the wall squareness so equal diagonal measurements are obtained in each direction. Diagonal slash horizontal bracing. Diagonal braces or tension straps are used to brace studs against lateral movement. Attach diagonal and horizontal bracing to the wall studs, especially at door openings. Reminder, studs used for interior walls are commonly used for diagonal bracing. Raising a metal stud wall. First measure the locations of the foundation anchor bolts, and then transfer the measurements to the bottom tracks and drill holes so the tracks fit over the bolts. Raise the wall and position it over the anchor bolts. Attach braces to the ends of the wall and approximately every 8 to 12 feet between the ends. Studs about 12 feet long make good. Braces. Nail wood blocks to the subfloor next to the lower ends of the intermediate braces. Plumb both corners of the wall using a magnetic level. Then fasten the lower ends of the braces to the outside joists. Run a string line from corner to corner with standoff blocks at each end. Align the top of the wall using a gauge block equal in thickness to the standoff blocks. Fasten the lower ends of the intermediate. Braces to the blocks nailed to the subfloor. Allow the temporary braces to remain in place until the entire building has been framed and sheathing or straps have been fastened to the walls. Installing a metal door frame in a metal stud wall. Several door frame types are available from different manufacturers. Simply follow the manufacturer's instructions for installation. Metal stud material estimating process. You must consider the correct gauge mills of every metal component when estimating materials. Tracks. Check prints for requirements. Measured in linear feet from the floor plans. Include top and bottom track. Add window and door opening widths, one piece for the doors, header, and two pieces for windows, sill and header. Studs. Determine stud length from the prints, usually sectional views. Use appropriate formula for determining stud quantity. 12 inches on center equals 1 times wall length, plus 2 for each opening, plus 1 for the end. 16 inches on center equals 0.75 times wall length, 
plus 2 for each opening, plus 1 for the end. 24 inches on center equals 0.5x wall length, plus 2 for each opening, plus 1 for the end. Fasteners Check prints for types of fasteners required. Determine quantity of each type and size of self-drilling and self-piercing screws. Determine quantity of each length of drive pins required. Determine if clinching, welding equipment and corrosion resistant coating is required. Thank you for watching. We know you have gained some knowledge. Please subscribe and hit the like button so you won't miss any knowledge video which can help you the builder. Have a great builder day.